much indeed. So I'm Henry Bonsu, a Ghanaian British journalist based in London. I've been coming to Paris for many, many years, and that's why I'm delighted to be here to launch this report, this UNESCO report on the futures of education. And Paris was a center of education for me many years ago when I was studying French language and literature. You could say it was the site of my education sentimentale, as the French call it. But today, I can see you're a really passionate bunch of people, so much so that you've decided to forego your lunch in order to be here for this launch. So thank you very much for that. Now, this report that we're going to tell you about in a moment or two has been in gestation for more than two years. So since before the pandemic forced a great reset on us and how we think about education. We've had broad engagement from all over the world and we'll explain how in just a moment. But for now, if I could kindly ask you to take your seats so that we can begin with great haste and deliberation and focus, and then we'll be able to start. So thank you very much. So you are here because you are passionate about the future of education. We're now going to launch this report, and we're going to start by hearing about the context and ambition of this initiative. How should we learn? When, where, with whom? Let's even ask why we learn. For answers, we need to begin with asking, what world do we want? What can we do today to make the world better for current and future generations? UNESCO understands the importance of having a vision, engaging in a dialogue, and taking action so education can help us repair a damaged planet, live in peace, and best use our technological achievements. UNESCO appointed an international commission and drew on input from over a million people to reimagine how knowledge and learning can shape the future of humanity and the planet. So there we go, you get a sense of the size and scale, the ambition of this particular project. Reimagining education, and we assembled an august panel to think really big thoughts about how to help people, the next generation, with education and safeguarding the planet. And when this flagship project was launched at the UN General Assembly in September 2019, the Secretary General himself, Antonio Guterres, offered his congratulations, his support, and encouragement. And we're delighted and honored indeed to have this video message from the UN Secretary General. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, education is the foundation for inclusive societies. It shapes the minds of people across the world as they fulfill their aspirations, both individual and collective. It is key to resolving many of the global and local challenges we face. We cannot heal a damaged planet, narrow huge inequalities, secure the rights of women and girls, strengthen trust or build peace without a strong commitment to education. But today, education is in turmoil. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the pre-existing global learning crisis. We are moving further away from the education and lifelong learning systems we need, as set out in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In the face of profound social, political, economic, environmental and technological change, there is a growing consensus that today's education systems are no longer fit for purpose. Excellencies, the time has come for transformative action on education. With this report, reimagining our futures together, UNESCO has given us a vision of education that ensures justice, human rights and opportunities for all. A vision that enables every person to live a life of purpose and contribute to our collective well-being and our shared home. A vision that will allow us to better respond to emerging challenges and better address the interests of future generations. I thank the International Commission on the Futures of Education and its chair, Her Excellency Saleh Work Zehuda, for their efforts. This report is a vital point of reference for the Transforming Education Summit that I will convene in September 2022. 
in the coming weeks. I will appoint a special coordinator to lay the groundwork for the summit, working closely with member states, young people, and education partners. I count on the leadership of UNESCO and the capacities of the United Nations system and our education partners. Today's report is an important benchmark and a launching pad. I look forward to working with you to build on the report's findings and to make the 2022 Transforming Education Summit a success so that quality education is a reality for all by 2030. So as the Secretary General was saying there, education as we've been doing it for the past few decades is no longer fit for purpose. We have to reimagine, as it says here, how we teach young people, reimagine education involving human rights, justice, and opportunities for all. So what does that look like? Well, it's now my honor to welcome to the stage Madame Audrey Azoulay, the UNESCO Director General. And you can be polite in your applause. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I would like first to greet the online presence of the President of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Ms. Saleh Work Zwede, who was with us from Addis Ababa. I would like to greet those who are also with us online and uh, greet all of you for this meeting of edu on education today at UNESCO. Today, we are going to present the fruit of a work of two years, a work that extends the rich, beautiful history of UNESCO, UNESCO's forward-looking publications on education with the Ford Commission of 1972 and its report, Learning to Be, then the Delors Commission in 1996 and its report, uh, Education and Treasure Hidden Inside but also the Book of Needs, to uh, go back to the name of the book written in 1947 by UNESCO to identify post-war educational needs. Today, more than 20 years after the Lelora Report, we had to reconnect with this tradition because in the meantime, the world has changed a lot with the acceleration of environmental, technological, social challenges, we run the risk of an obsolete education which could not prevent but suffer from education in the future. When even here in uh, 2019, the IBEVS said that we had already degraded 75% of the terrestrial environment, how can education not uh, stand up to this immense challenge? And of course, there was the COVID crisis, the biggest educational disruption in history by depriving more than 90% of the world's school population of their classrooms. It has also deepened all inequalities in our societies, especially in terms of digital technology, and also because nine out of 10 students in Africa do not have access to a computer at home. It was thus necessary to rethink or reimagine and ask ourselves collectively about education so that it does not uh, lag behind, but it is uh, ahead of the world. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, by launching this report, we also wanted to use participative methods, symbolizing what tomorrow's education should be, more open and more collaborative. It's uh, a report which is the fruit of broad consultations, conversations involving more than a million teachers, students, parents, academics, the educative, the education community at large. I would like to thank very uh, sincerely the International Commission and its chair, the President of Ethiopia, for leading this reflection process. She kept on a powerful commitment, charting a course and ensuring that all parties stayed on. I would like also to thank someone very special with, with us in this room today, His Excellency Antonio Novoa, the Ambassador of Portugal, for inspiring and coordinating the writing of the report. 
which he defines as a message against fatality, a message on education as a global common good. The presentation of uh, the report today does not bring our work to an end, quite the contrary. And as the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, just said, it demonstrates not only UNESCO's leadership in mobilizing collective intelligence, but it will also serve as a fundamental point of reference for the UN Transforming Education Summit next year, and we are very proud of that. And now we must ensure that the report recommendations are shared if the member states decide so. I thank you all and wish you fruitful discussions. Merci. Merci. Thank you very much. Indeed, un trésor caché dedans. I like that phrase. It will stay with me. Un trésor caché dedans. <laughs> you see, you just push and you polish and you polish and you get the treasure inside, the fruit of the mind of that young child, if you give them the opportunity. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Madam Director General. It is now a great honor to pass the floor to the President of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Chair of the International Commission on the Futures of Education, Her Excellency, Madame Saleh Work Jevde, who is joining us today by video. Thank you very much. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, tout d'abord, mes félicitations les plus chaleureuses à vous, Madame la Directrice Générale, Audrey Azoulay, pour votre brillante réélection à la tête de l'UNESCO. Je vous souhaite beaucoup de succès. Vous pouvez compter sur mon soutien. And thank you, Director General, for your words of introduction. I have known UNESCO well since my time as permanent representative of my country and was able to witness its highs and lows. Under the leadership of uh, my good friend, Director Jean Lazoulet, we've seen the heights of what UNESCO can achieve by building bridges between different stakeholders and reaching consensus on highly sensitive issues, among others. I would like to thank you also for your support throughout the work of the Commission. I would have loved very much to be with you in person as planned, but fate decided otherwise. In view of the prevailing situation in my country, I have remained where I should be. It's my pleasure and duty as chair of the International Commission of the Futures of Education to introduce the report of the commission, reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education. I commend all the members of the commission for their unwavering commitment over the past two years and 19 meetings in often difficult circumstances to bring this important work to fruition. Their wealth of knowledge, their rich experience, their dedication and ability to reach common positions have brought us to where we are today. I can't thank them enough. In a moment, you'll be hearing each of them presenting some of the key ideas in the report. Ladies and gentlemen, Perfect. we are at the crossroads, a turning point in human history. While there has been undeniable progress in human development over the last, the past decades, unsustainable patterns of development and overlapping crises and shocks have, are threatening our shared futures. The global disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic has starkly reminded us of our vulnerabilities as well as our interconnectedness. It was further, it has further underlined the need for a fundamental shift in the way we approach education and development and for long-term thinking address persistent inequalities. <clears throat> in our quest for growth, we have overwhelmed our natural environment, threatening our own existence. Today, high living standards coexist with gapping inequalities and exclusion. More and more people are engaged in public life, but the fabric of civil society and democracy is framed. Technological innovation is transforming some of our lives but also raising serious concerns for equity, inclusion, and democratic participation in many parts of the world, especially the global south. The futures of humanity and the planet are at risk. We now face a critical choice. Do we continue on an unsustainable path or radically change course? The commission believes that changing course to ensure more just 
inclusive and sustainable futures for all begins by reframing what it means to be human, redefining our relationships with each other, with the living planet as well as uh, technology. And education is key to redefining ourselves in relation to each other and the world around us. Education can help set, a, set us on path towards more just and sustainable futures for all. Yet, despite undeniable progress in educational development over the decades, we must recognize that we still have not ensured education for all as a fundamental human right for all. Economically vulnerable and historically marginalized communities continue to be excluded. Too many children, youth and adults are denied meaningful educational opportunities, especially women and children, particularly in the global south. In low-income countries, three out of five adolescents and youth are currently out of secondary school. One in four youth and two in five women are still not literate today. This is unacceptable in 2021. And the only way these staggering inequalities will be addressed is by securing global and national financing for education. All emerging evidence indicates that the educational disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic is dramatically worsening what has been termed as global learning crisis. Again, this has disproportionately impacted communities in the global south. It, is therefore, it has therefore become plainly clear that the way we organize education across the world does not do enough to ensure just societies and shared progress that benefits all. It has also become clear that education is not doing enough to ensure peaceful societies and a healthy planet. The questions we must answer and that our report tackles are, how can we ensure the right to meaningful education that is emancipatory, empowering, and transformative for individuals and communities? Have our current education systems reached the limit of their possibilities? Do our difficulties arise from the very ways in which education itself is organized? Do some of our challenges in fact stem from what and how we educate? Education in court between unfulfilled promises of the past and uncertain futures. To address this dual challenge and to shape just and sustainable futures, education itself must be transformed. Education must be transformed to redefine our relationships with each other. In recent years, ballooning inequalities, democratic backsliding, and growing polarization have clearly shown that we need to rebuild our relationships with one another. At the same time, citizens, citizen participation and activism have flourished worldwide in response to rising discrimination and injustice. These developments have important consequences for education rooted in human rights, citizenship, and civil, civic participation at local, national, and uh, global levels. We need pedagogies of cooperation, collaboration, and solidarity that treasure and sustain diversity and pluralism. It also requires the unlearning of bias, prejudice, and dividedness that plague our societies. The spread of misinformation must be countered through scientific, digital, and humanistic literacies. Education must also be transformed to redefine our relationship with the planet. Our planet is in peril. While many regions of the global south have contributed the least to the climate crisis, they are prone to the greatest risks. Steps are being taken towards decarbonization and the greening of economies, but they are insufficient to address the crisis we are facing. Fortunately, children and youth are leading the way calling for meaningful action and delivering harsh rebacks to those who refuse to face the urgency of the situation. The ecological crisis requires curricula that fundamentally reorient the place of humans in the world. Environmental education will need to be a core component of education in the future. It also implies a strengthening of science education, a priority that is essential, not only in light of climate change, 
but also in light of the upheavals we have experienced due to the pandemic. Enfin, la transformation de l'éducation doit contribuer à redéfinir notre relation avec la technologie. Notre relation à l'information, aux données et aux connaissances a profondément changé au cours des dernières décennies. Les technologies numériques recèlent un énorme potentiel de transformation, mais la transformation numérique de l'éducation doit être orientée de manière à profiter à tous. Une culture numérique critique est essentielle à la citoyenneté au XXIe siècle. Et si les technologies numériques vont transformer le travail des écoles et des enseignants, elles ne peuvent ni ne doivent les remplacer, comme l'ont clairement illustré la pandémie et les fermetures généralisées d'écoles qui ont suivi. La dimension humaine de l'éducation reste centrale. Le meilleur algorithme ne peut remplacer les compétences sociales et émotionnelles des éducateurs, leur humanité, leur empathie et leur attention. En outre, nous devons nous attaquer à la fracture numérique en Afrique, où l'accès aux ordinateurs domestiques et à l'Internet est beaucoup plus faible que dans le reste du monde. Excellence, distinguée déléguée. Afin de transformer l'éducation et de redéfinir notre relation les uns avec les autres, avec la planète et avec la technologie, la Commission propose que nous établissions un nouveau contrat social pour l'éducation. Le point de départ de ce nouveau contrat social est une vision partagée des, ob des objectifs de l'éducation en tant qu'entreprise publique et bien commun. Il doit réaffirmer et étendre le principe fondamental du droit à l'éducation tout au long de la vie qui englobe le droit à l'information, à la culture, à la science et à la connectivité. Un nouveau contrat social pour l'éducation et notre chance de réparer les injustices du passé et de transformer l'avenir en rééquilibrant nos relations les uns avec les autres, avec la biosphère et avec, avec les technologies. Ce rapport présente une vision et des étapes pour créer en commun ce nouveau contrat social pour l'éducation. Le rapport n'est pas un plan, mais un document vivant et une invitation à un engagement continu. Il appelle les gouvernements, la société civile, les éducateurs, les étudiants et les jeunes à poursuivre le dialogue et les actions. Un nouveau contrat social pour l'éducation doit être construit ensemble. En outre, ce contrat social s'inscrit dans le droit fil du rapport du secrétaire général des Nations unies intitulé « Notre programme commun » et du prochain sommet des Nations unies sur la transformation de l'éducation 2022 qu'on vient de l'annoncer le secrétaire général. Le lien stratégique entre notre rapport et l'approche de l'éducation euh, du secrétaire général garantira la pertinence et l'impact de notre rapport dans les années à venir. C'est un honneur d'avoir été invité par la directrice générale à présider cette commission. Cependant, je ne m'attendais pas à ce que cela se fasse dans des circonstances parfois très difficiles. Malgré le conflit armé dans mon pays et malgré l'incertitude que j'ai parfois ressenti quant à ma capacité à participer aux nombreuses réunions de la commission, que la Commission a organisées, je suis fière que nous ayons rendu le lancement de ce rapport possible. J'ai énormément appris de mes éminents membres de la Commission au cours de ces 19 réunions que nous avons tenues. J'aimerais dédier mes efforts personnels à la tête de cette Commission en tant que première femme de surcroît africaine à toutes les femmes du monde et en particulier à mes sœurs éthiopiennes qui font les frais du conflit armé et les jeunes filles et garçons qui restent en dehors de l'école en raison des déplacements et la destruction de leurs écoles. Nous devons veiller à ce que les femmes et les jeunes filles des pays défavorisés, y compris bien évidemment l'Afrique, reçoivent l'éducation de qualité dont elles ont besoin pour être les futurs leaders de leur pays. Je voudrais saisir cette occasion pour remercier plus particulièrement l'ambassadeur Novoa du Portugal pour avoir dirigé avec compétence et assiduité le comité de recherche et de rédaction avec les membres de la Commission. Mes remerciements vont aussi à l'endroit de la DG adjointe Giannini, qui nous a accompagnés, de Sobito Tawik et de son équipe, 
du secrétariat de l'UNESCO dont leur rôle déterminant nous a permis de produire ce rapport de qualité dans les délais impartis. Je ne saurais conclure, alors que j'ai le privilège de m'adresser à vous, sans rappeler une évidence qui est souvent occultée. Rien n'est possible et périn sans la paix. Je suis hélas bien placée pour le dire. Je le dis du haut de cette tribune, car une des missions de l'UNESCO est de contribuer à l'édification d'une culture de la paix, à l'éducation pour la paix, pour ainsi prévenir les guerres, surtout les plus terribles d'entre elles, les guerres fratricides, d'où personne ne sort gagnant. Elles sont tout simplement dévastatrices. Le grand apôtre de la paix et de la non-violence, Mahatma Gandhi, disait, et je cite, « Il n'y a pas de chemin vers la paix, la paix est le chemin. » En fait, la première phrase de l'acte constitutif de l'UNESCO dit bien que les guerres prenant naissance dans l'esprit des hommes, c'est dans l'esprit des hommes que doivent être élevées les défenses de la paix. La culture de la paix doit être traduite par des faits sur le terrain. Ce travail commence par l'éducation. Je vous invite à vous y engager et je vous remercie pour votre aimable attention. Your Excellency, Madam President, thank you very much indeed, and we look forward to hearing from you again just at the end of our session. In a moment also, we will hear from some members of your commission. We'll be playing a video, and they'll talk to you a bit more about what they did and how they went about their work. And then after that, we'll get the chance to get some initial reactions from three ministers of education. We've got plenty of ministers in the room here today, but we'll be hearing from the Minister of Education from Bangladesh, Cuba and Slovenia. I would like to invite those three uh, ministers to come to the stage, as well as the Assistant Director General for Education, right here at UNESCO, Stefania Giannini, herself a former Minister of Education from Italy. So uh, the Ministers of Education from Bangladesh, Cuba, Cuba and Slovenia, so if you can go here, and the ADG will go here, ADG, in the beat. Bangladesh is here. Bangladesh, the EC. Bangladesh, Cuba, and Slovenia. Merci. So I will introduce you fully. Let me just, excuse me for being so rude, for walking in front of you. But I will introduce you fully in a moment. We'll get your reaction. But first, let's have a look at this video, which will explain in more detail exactly how the International Commission, the members, went about their work, and they'll explain their report. So please, let's have a look. We're all together on this planet, but we do not share others' resources well or use them in a sustainable manner, nor do we live well enough with one another. Unacceptable inequalities exist between different regions of the world. We are far from achieving gender equality for women and girls. However, education is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal. Without abandoning all that we know, we need to transform education. Classrooms and schools are essential, but they will need to be built and experienced differently in the future. Work is changing rapidly, and education will need to build skills needed in 21st century workplaces. At present, too many digital divides exist, particularly in Africa. So we must harness the great promise of the digital revolution. Over the last two years, it has been my privilege to lead UNESCO's International Commission on the Futures of Education, with inputs from over a million people who shared their hopes and fears and ideas we are pleased to now present this report, reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education. Contributors to the report include thought leaders from all corners of the world. The report has two principles fondateurs. The premier concerns the rights of humans, and in particular the right to education, conceived in a manner ample, large, de façon à embrasser la diversité, toutes les diversités qui existent dans le monde, mais aussi à embrasser 
l'idée d'un cycle de vie qui va dès la naissance jusqu'à l'âge adulte, avec toutes les conséquences, cette idée d'une éducation tout au long de la vie. Le deuxième principe fondateur concerne l'idée qu'il faut agir ensemble, l'idée de l'interdépendance dans le monde. Et à partir de cette idée, nous appelons à construire l'éducation comme un projet public et un bien commun, un bien commun mondial. Et c'est pourquoi l'idée de participation est tellement importante pour nous dans ce rapport. Our report, Reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education, which is really an invitation to a broad, inclusive, democratic and participatory dialogue with each and every one of you, with every person on this planet with an interest in what educational institutions do. A dialogue designed to ask the question, how do we become more effective in preparing people so that they can fully participate civically and economically in their societies and contribute to build a more inclusive and a more sustainable world. The report brought the idea of a common, it means together. This is why in the title we use the, the, the word together. The purpose of the report is how to put humankind together in the global world. And to be together today, we need to have education. Education is the vector of progress, is the vector of togetherness. I think that the most important thing about this report is that it centers the work of education around major challenges and opportunities before us in the world. So big global strategic issues like climate change, the fact that the fourth industrial revolution is underway, that the world is more interconnected than ever before. And using those as the basis upon which to frame our conception of what education should be as we prepare the next generation to confront these problems and to take advantage of the opportunities. The one recent major challenge to education that's affected most students around the world has been the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 crisis has revealed vulnerabilities in modern social systems, including education. It is essential to reimagine the educational system now so that we can prepare for the next global crisis that may occur in the future and also build a more resilient society and create a sustainable future. This report is happening against the backsliding in democratic governance that we've seen all over the world. It's a backsliding in democratic governance that's also building up on significant spread of exclusionary identity-based politics, greater inequities. They're also building up on the discontent, basically, of people who feel they've been left behind uh, by a globalized world order. They also will have a significant impact on education, both not only in terms of the curricula, uh, but also in terms of who has access to education, what kind of approaches to education we employ. The report makes recommendations on a number of different dimensions. The report tries to present this as a unified concept of education in an enlarged sense where people would acquire not just cognitive skills and have guidance in their intellectual development, but also achieve the ability for emotional empathy, sympathy for the plight of others, concern for social justice and human rights, and, extremely important, an awareness of the planet that we're living on and the other species inhabiting it, and that all of that needs to be particularly emphasized in the education of the future. Children are not like pieces of furniture, mass produced to a standard. And uh, teachers are not factory workers. We are not superheroes either, and we won't be able to build the futures of education that we envision if we remain in isolation. We need to see teaching as a creative and collaborative profession. And we need to support teachers' freedom and agency. We need to remind 
that as much as we value the power of technology, technology by itself will never replace schools or teachers. Technology can elevate learning, but teachers and schools are irreplaceable. We have to do our best to teach young generations to care for each other. The report calls for pedagogies of cooperation and solidarity, and this means that we should willingly embrace the idea of diversity. We need a kind of new social contract for that. Cooperation and collaboration need to become the defining characteristics of learning communities. All of this has huge implications for how we design curriculum and approach knowledge. Knowledge is part of our global commons. It's like water, it's like air. It's something that we all share and that we must all protect, improve and revise all the time. So that's a very basic idea, but then in the report that is more carefully elaborated, in terms of what teachers can do, researchers can do, what students can do, how can we recognize that education is not only a space in which existing knowledge is shared, but new knowledge is created. UNESCO as an organization uh, devoted to human rights regards the knowledge commons and access to it as a human right. Therefore, the authors of the report are committed to the idea that states and governments must play a vital role and not just allow the production and distribution of knowledge to fall entirely uh, into the hands of the marketplace and let the chips fall where they may. We need to work together internationally. We should have a commitment to expand our resources for education especially for those people in the South. We also need to understand the knowledge in the past in general generated from the North. But to cope in the challenges, we need to have knowledge, not only from the North, but also from the South. And we need to have trilateral cooperation in our educational effort and uh, the widening disparity between the have and have not. We should educate our students with a morality to understand that humanity has common futures. And uh, we should have the empathy to understand the needs of everyone and to support anyone. La dimensión de los derechos humanos en la educación se hace indispensable. El segundo punto para mí tiene que ver con la valoración, la inclusión y el reconocimiento de los derechos de los pueblos indígenas y de las culturas, las diversidades culturales, y que esto se vea como una riqueza de la cual también los estudiantes y las nuevas generaciones se deben nutrir. Lo tercero tiene que ver mucho con la sostenibilidad del planeta. La inclusión en el sistema educativo, lo que es el impacto del cambio climático, esta forma de mirar el mundo solo depredando y pensando en una explotación de recursos naturales, nos parece que tiene que parar y la nueva generación tiene que entender que hay que cuidar el entorno, hay que cuidar el planeta y eso significa también cuidar la vida de la humanidad. The report includes a call for research, for international cooperation, and global solidarity. هو يفتح نقاشات ولكنه كذلك أداة يمكن أن تكون يعني أداة هامة لرسم مسارات لتغيير التربية وجعلها تربية للمستقبل يمكن لصناع القرار أن تكون لهم الأدوات من أجل إصلاح التربية والتعليم يمكن المجتمع المدني أن يستعمل هذا التقرير كذلك للقيام بحملات من أجل الدفع في اتجاه يعني 
تطوير مستقبل التعليم. Our commission was a commission of experts, but I think one of our conclusions was that it's not our expertise, but the expertise of future generations that we want to empower through this report. I think the recommendations that are the most important have to do with transforming education to meet the needs and challenges of our future, to meet ecological challenges, to meet the challenges of peace, and to make sure that no one is left behind. No global dialogue can meaningfully move forward without embracing local, properly inclusive and collaborative strategies. This global dialogue is no different. And the starting point has to be within our own communities. We must insist that every voice is heard and represented. And we must ensure that all stakeholders across all sectors step up to the plate and work together towards realizing this common good. Only then will we be able to truly reinforce the future of education and in turn create a sustainable future for all. While we were preparing this report, the COVID-19 global health pandemic disrupted the education of children, youth, and learners of all ages. Despite the challenges, we have seen remarkable efforts from teachers, families, and students to continue to learn and grow during these difficult times. We dedicate this report to the teachers and students whose lives were disrupted by COVID, and we hope that the proposals it presents and the dialogue and action it calls for will be of help to them as we work together today to shape futures for humanity and the planet that are peaceful, equitable, and sustainable. Fantastic, 14 minutes. So no more education for the marketplace, but education for the common good. We've got a few minutes left and we need to get instant reaction. There's a real buzz on the stage right here. So first of all, let's hear from Her Excellency, Madame Dipu Moni, the Minister of Education of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, for your reaction, Your Excellency. Um, well, in the last few decades, UNESCO has uh, done uh, tremendous work and uh, reached education to millions of doorsteps around the world through its various initiatives and um, throughout the world and even in Bangladesh we have achieved so much but there is still so much suffering around the world discrimination wars destructions um, uh, in, in, on an unprecedented uh, scale so we need um, a culture of peace uh, to prevail and to have shared security. And we believe that the right kind of education um, is, is the solution. And uh, we believe that our learners, um, our future generation, uh, they must learn um, to respect, to be respectful to others' rights and freedoms and uh, be respectful global citizens. And they must learn how to uh, take care of the, uh, redress the climate change impacts and um, follow a green path to development, must take care of uh, our marine resources, look after our oceans, and as how to sustainably uh, explore the uh, resources, um, um, the ma marine resources. And uh, about the IT, uh, ICT education, um, there is already a digital gap uh, that is prevailing, we must not uh, widen it, rather uh, we must do away with this, with this gap and therefore um, I think uh, we have to create a future uh, together and we must transform education and transform education in one generation uh, to ensure that there is quality, uh, there is um, inclusion and um, democratic values. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that rapid reaction, Minister. Thank you very much from Bangladesh there. It's now our honor to welcome the Minister of Education of Cuba, or Cuba, Her Excellency Madame Ina Elsa Velasquez Cobeya. 
for your reaction. Thank you. Good afternoon. We would like to um, extend our thanks for being able to um, attend this event, the launching of this report, which of course is um, being launched within the context of the pandemic and its impact on education. We thank the International Commission for this report and UNESCO for its co coordination of the work, as well as all of the consultations that took place so that we could arrive at this report. The report that is being launched today is fully in line with the um, challenges that we have ahead for the future, and it gives us a roadmap for the policies we need to put in place for the future. So and this is, of course, fully within the mandate of UNESCO. That is to say, orienting education up to 2050 and beyond. We need to be able to have debates about this and collective reflections regarding the, what needs to be done and the political will that governments need to have so that they can ensure that education is a right for all, a lifelong right for all. What we are doing today will be um, essential for tomorrow. Education for tomorrow will depend on the solutions that we can find for the problems that we already have, such as illiteracy, poverty, inequality, discrimination born out of an unjust international order. Education is a vector so that we can move towards a better world. It contributes to peace, sustainable development, and um, making sure that there is l less inequality between humans. All of this can only be done if we can educate our citizens within a climate of peace and where we can respect our planet. And this last point is fundamental, especially for small island developing states. And they are being impacted more and more, as we know, by climate change. Edu promoting education is promoting um, cultural diversity and solidarity. It means instilling ethics in young people. Education is a way for us to um, protect ourselves from fake news, misinformation, intolerance and discrimination, and hate speech that is often um, transmitted across the social networks. During the um, COVID pandemic, we have seen the role, the important role that the state plays in fighting against systemic crises. Cuba mm, was able to mobilize human and, um, and economic resources despite the difficult economic situation that our country is in. We did not want to compromise the future of young people. We wanted to make sure that young people can get back to school as quickly as possible. And indeed, our education policy was um, set up so that we could make sure that education is free, is universal and accessible to all. The work of scientists as well is absolutely um, vital, as well as that of the health sector and other important sectors so that young people, young children, adolescents can access education and make sure that they are in a state of mind so that they are able to um, contribute to the social and economic progress of their countries. Thank you. And I would now like to welcome Her Excellency Madame Simona Kustek, Minister of Education, Science and Sport of Slovenia. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, respectful Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is really a big day today because of the work that have been done in uh, the name of International Commission of the Futures of Education and my big congratulations and for, for the accomplished work. And also uh, a big honor expressed to the UNESCO to have the strength and power um, and also patience uh, with this. Because today I believe that we are setting our common future pledges to education, to our children, to our teachers, to the societies of the future because it is more than time that we need to do something that uh, we said is uh, kind of a resetting, uh, refreshment of uh, the world in which we are living now. 
And first of all, I also need to say that I'm very proud that uh, my country, Slovenia, one of the smallest post-socialist European countries, was very actively participating in all those processes and was also able to share our expectations, our abilities, our, um, uh, how to say, um, the, uh, the exchanges of uh, what we can deliver to this common, globally common uh, pledge for the future. Uh, and uh, allow me also to speak in the name of the Council of the European Union. Uh, as you know, Slovenia is now presiding the Council of, to, uh, of the European Union as well. And also here we are speaking the common voice. We all are speaking about the need to redefine, to renew the education, educational systems for the future. And there are three elements where uh, our uh, homework needs to be done very close and very near in the future. The first one is related to the contents. We need to speak about what are the contents that needs to be educated also in the future. What are the fundamental, the traditional ones, and what are the ones that are a reflection of the times uh, that we are living now, the needs of our younger, younger generations. And here, of course, we are speaking about green issues, environmental issues, uh, if we ask our children uh, as well. Then the second uh, important element that we need to refresh is the question of the tools, pedagogical tools and procedures that we uh, need to apply if we want to get the best out of uh, knowledge. And here we are speaking, of course, especially about the digitalization, artificial intelligence, and everything uh, of pros and cons that goes together with this. And the third element definitely is the one that is the most emphasized, also was and has been through your, um, through your addressments, the values. What are the elementary set of values that shape the modern future well-being uh, of education and educational systems. Definitely equity, inclusiveness, solidarity, openness. Openness especially to um, understanding the differences of uh, continents, of countries, uh, their, uh, their abilities, and our preparedness to help, to be solidar, to put and take hand to each other and to help each other to be uh, best, to, to get best out of, uh, out of us. And yes, if we want to do something like that, then we need to cooperate. Cooperation is the only answer, is the only approach yes. to something that is going to be global Absolutely. and lifelong learning oriented. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much indeed for the contributions from Bangladesh, Cuba and Slovenia. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And now, finally, I would like to invite UNESCO's Assistant Director General for Education, Stefani Giannini, to the podium to tell us a bit about the next steps and to close the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, really, and great, great opportunity to, to, to be here, to be involved in this uh, extraordinary process. Excellencies, uh, I have one minute, I think, more or less, to conclude, to wrap up a so inspiring discussion, so I go straight to the point, uh, given my understanding of uh, this uh, very important uh, report. I, I think it's not a blueprint, absolutely. It's a call for action. It's a call for reaction. It's a call for change. It's a call for finding new ways in education, through education, for rebalancing some critical relationships we have to rethink with each other, with the planet and the nature, with technology. This is really very much which is around us, and this is very much what education can contribute to change. And uh, how can we do that? I think it's putting on the table the main questions. What we have, what we need to change, what we have to strengthen in the system as it is, and what needs to be absolutely dramatically reshaped, reimagined for the future. I mean, in a couple of days, we'll celebrate the 75th anniversary of this amazing organization. And it's incredible 
powerful that this report comes at a time where we need a perspective for maybe more than 75 years, for the next century. And this is what you'll find in this live document. So let me join Director General to thank Madam uh, President, uh, uh, Sally Work, uh, the commissioners, uh, some of them uh, already expressed uh, their passion, uh, their uh, you know, commitment, engagement, which doesn't, doesn't end today. It's a process. It's a process which will involve millions of people around the world in this live uh, document to be implemented. And let me thank uh, all of you for being here with us uh, and bringing uh, some soft food for thought and action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed to ADG Giannini. I feel your passion and your energy. And there we close this session. Thank you very much, Excellencies. And those of you who are due to move to room two for the general um, meeting, that's across the way. So please move across now, those of you who are going to room two for the GEM. Thank you very much indeed. We can declare this report officially launched. Thank you.